People naturally want to be independent. When they cannot walk or move easily because of age or disability, they still prefer getting around by themselves rather than having to rely upon others. Wheelchairs, walkers, crutches, and canes are tools that can help people remain as independent as possible. For people who use aids such as a wheelchair or walker, it's important to have a safe home environment. Eliminate clutter on the floor. Throw rugs are especially difficult to walk or roll over. Remove them from areas of traffic. Good lighting is crucial, especially for older adults who need at least 50% more light to see well compared to someone younger. Never move someone in the dark. Make sure that there is enough room to maneuver around furniture and through doors. When serving food or drink, keep the temperature of hot food or liquids warm rather than hot. He or she may not be able to move fast enough if a spill should occur. Trust is important when providing care. Always explain what you are planning to do before you attempt to move someone. Speaking and listening to each other will reduce the chance of injury. Allow the person to help as much as possible. It is tiring for the person in a wheelchair to constantly look up. Try to sit during conversations so that you are at eye level with each other. Sometimes people talk over the person in the wheelchair as if he or she is not there. Always include the person in conversation. Pets can be great companions, but they can also get underfoot. Secure them in another room before beginning to help someone transfer to or from a wheelchair or ambulate with a walker. Both you and the person being moved should wear tied or fastened shoes with flat, non-skid soles. Loose-fitting slippers or stocking feet can be slippery on smooth surfaces and could cause a fall. Always support the arms and legs of the person in a wheelchair by using armrests or placing them in the person's lap. The arm should never be left hanging off the sides of the chair. Caring for someone in a wheelchair requires body movements such as lifting, reaching, and bending. You can reduce the risk of injury to your back when you apply the principles of body mechanics. These principles help keep the body in proper alignment. Proper alignment maintains the natural curves of the spine helping to conserve energy and prevent muscle strain. Spread your feet apart to make a solid base. When you lift an object, face the direction of movement. Always bring the object as close to you as possible. Tighten your abdominal muscles by pulling your belly button in toward your spine. This helps to support the back. Bend at your knees and hips, not at the waist. Then lift with your legs. Remember to bring the person or object as close to you as possible. Use the large muscles in the legs to lift. Never lift by pulling up with your arms or upper body. There are some control points on the body. Um, the primary one is the pelvis. And the reason that we consider the pelvis to be a, the primary body control point is because that's where our center of mass is. Um, another control point would be the knees. You know, when someone is coming from sitting to standing or standing to sitting, if you're controlling the knees, that will keep the person from um, falling sometimes or at least control their descent or ascent, um, that would be the main points in what we're talking about. Uh, the way a person would control the knees um, would be to utilize your knees. Um, if you utilize your knees to make contact with the individual's knees that you're helping come from sitting to standing, you actually add a little force there so that you have a counter force against what you're doing with the pelvis. Um, it's, um, it's something that is often missed when trying to control uh, someone's transfer um, and trying to get out of the way of the knees or forgetting that the knees need some support as well. And if someone is weak enough, their legs aren't strong enough, they don't have good control over their knees. So using your knees as kind of a focal point against theirs or blocking theirs, it helps.
A gait belt is a belt that is utilized around the waist of an individual that needs help with uh, transfers from one surface to another or when walking. Um, it is for the assistant to hold on to. That's the key part. Oftentimes there's, if you're helping someone walk or transfer from one surface to another, um, there's nothing to grab onto other than an arm or you know a, a, the, the pants or something like that and that's not very safe. So this is designed to be held on to. This is the proper way to apply a gait belt. Um, generally, we're going to shoot for the same area of uh, just above the hips and below the rib cage. So reach around the individual, kind of find that spot. These buckles are, every one I've ever seen, are always the same. You slide through the first slot and into the second. Once you're in place there, now you need to see how tight it is. This would be too loose because if I were to try and help him or had to help him uh, get him up in any way, this is just going to slide right up. So you want to make sure it's snug enough that it's not painful. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. And that we can actually hold on to it and give support. Never place a gate belt over drains, tubes, or wounds. When, when the average person is going to uh, come from sitting to standing, um, it, it, we're going to go through just the basic components that we all do every day when we come um, to standing after we've been sitting down. Uh, basically what we do is we slide forward on the surface where we're sitting, we lean forward and we get out to this range here where we're going to be able to use our legs to push up and we push up and stand up. Going back down, it's the same thing. This is just the way that the body is made and this is the way that we stand up um, when we've been sitting so we can use our balance and use our legs to assist us. We want to use that exact same approach when we're helping someone stand up. Uh, the idea is if someone is being helped, you want to make sure that they are out toward the edge of the surface where they're sitting and that they lean forward. Uh, a key little um, tip that we use for people is to get their nose over their toes. That way they're not trying to sit leaning way back and then try to stand. So if you use the phrase nose over toes, it's easy to remember that part of leaning forward. And then if you're going to assist someone by helping them through a gait belt, um, you can hold on, their nose over their toes, and you can assist them to come to the standing position. This is probably the most common type of wheelchair you're going to see. It is called a lightweight wheelchair. And there are also other wheelchairs, like the standard wheelchair, which is heavier than this chair. Um, there are motorized wheelchairs. There's wheelchairs that have the back is higher and actually reclines, that the person can be lying in the chair. But I'm showing the lightweight wheelchair because this is probably the most common and it's important to get a lightweight chair, if, especially if you're going to be moving somebody in and out of the car because the um, standard wheelchair can be quite heavy. This one's lighter because there's lighter material. This is lighter material in the seat. It's also made of lighter materials like the leg uh, rests and the arm rests. So um, the parts of the wheelchair are, this is the first part, the armrest, and in this particular wheelchair, the armrests flip back. Some of the wheelchairs, you're going to have two buttons, and you'll press those buttons in, and you'll actually remove the entire armrest. Another important part of the wheelchair is the wheel lock, or sometimes they'll call it a brake, but it's not used as a brake. It's used to set the wheelchair in place, and you really have to push down to set that lock. You can hear that second, that snap, and then that sets the wheelchair. The leg rests, there are different types of leg rests, and some of them actually are called elevated leg rest, and they'll uh, elevate the person's leg. These are just the uh, most common leg rest. They'll swing, all of leg rests will swing away. They can actually be removed when you're doing the transfer. And to put the leg rest back on, it's important to come from the back of it like this and then swing it back into place and make sure that's uh, locked into place. On the back of the wheelchair, on this particular wheelchair, they have what are called anti-tip anti bars and this is for someone who is uh, on their own and they may be in terrain that could cause them to tip back out of the chair and these prevent the person from tipping back. These can actually be turned out of the way if uh, you don't want them in the way you can turn them up or you can actually remove the anti-tip if you want to use the 
tip bars then that are located on the back. You can actually use the, the bar to tip the wheelchair back when you're going up and down curbs. So these are the basic components of a wheelchair. To set up for the transfer, you must first position the wheelchair correctly and also the person you are helping to move. To set up the wheelchair, begin by removing the leg supports. So now that we have the wheelchair set up, ready for the transfer, we want to get Lupe ready for the transfer. Um, we want to make sure first that he is not right at the edge of the bed. You want to have him away from the edge of the bed just a bit so that when he rolls over completely, there's still room there for him to sit. The first thing we'll do is have him bend both knees up so his feet are flat on the bed. Good. And then I'll have you roll over on your side. Just kind of a nice log roll there. Good. He's got plenty of room there. And we'll bring your legs off the side of the bed. And uh, might need to help just a little bit there. Feed it. And then I'll have you push up from the bed. And I'm going to place my hand just back here on his shoulder blade, between his shoulder blades, um, until he's securely sitting on the side of the bed. So now that uh, Lupe is sitting on the side of the bed, um, it's a good time to put the gate belt on to assist with the transfer. And um, some people are able to move themselves to the edge of the bed. Uh, if Lupe needs a little help with that, what I'll have him do is uh, lean over towards the left side and I'll help him scoot his right hip forward. And I'll have you lean to the right and scoot until his feet are flat on the floor. This is the setup for transferring. The leg supports have been removed. The wheelchair is at an angle to the bed and the wheels are locked. He is at the edge of the bed with the gate belt on. His hands are on the bed ready to help push off. His feet are apart and flat on the floor. In a stand pivot transfer, the person you are assisting moves into standing position and then pivots into the new position by taking small steps. So now that Lupe's uh, at the edge of the bed and ready to transfer, we want to give him a moment just to sit and allow uh, any dizziness or lightheadedness to clear. Um, and then we're ready to proceed on with the transfer. Um, I'll uh, take a hold of each side of the gate belt and have him lean forward and push up from the side of the bed. Um, and then we'll pause again in case there's, again, any dizziness or lightheadedness. Um, so now, Lupe, I'll have you turn and just to be sure your legs are against the back of the chair. And then reach back for the armrest and bend forward and lower yourself down nice and slow. And easy. Good. And there you go. Uh, we're going to come back over to the bed. So I want to have you put your arms uh, on the armrest there and lean forward and stand and then turn towards the bed till your legs hit the bed and then reach back and sit. For an individual that is unable to stand all the way up, uh, we would do a squat pivot transfer. So to get ready for that, we're going to move the armrest, um, either slide it back if that's, uh, or it, uh, some armrest can be completely removed. Um, so what we're going to do there is I'm going to have Lupe reach over to the opposite side of the chair so he can help himself and lean forward and just partially stand and pivot over. And then you can go ahead, if you can scoot over, that's good, okay. And then we uh, bring the armrest back down into place and make sure it locks into place. Some things to be careful of um, always when transferring, whether it's something you're doing for the first time or whether someone does it for a living, is to remember that there are some injuries that can occur doing transfers um, by the person being helped grabbing at the individual helping them. Um, this I've also seen and have been part of when people have been injured this way. Um, people's tendency when being helped is to grab what's closest or what seems to be the best thing for them. Um, so grabbing 
for your head, your neck is common. So if you think about uh, someone going up to someone and helping them and just reaching their arms around your neck to get a good grip, that can injure your neck. Also, if that happens, then now you're gonna probably let them go and everybody's gonna hit the floor. So that's the one thing. The other thing is, is not um, allowing or trying to very much avoid um, doing arm grabbing, either direction. You do not want to lift someone up by grabbing their arm and pulling them up. That's what a gate belt is for or that's what the pelvis is for. A slide board or transfer board um, is, it can be plastic or it can be wood. Um, it is an item used to help someone transfer from one surface to another. Generally speaking, it would be utilized uh, with someone that is wheelchair bound, whether permanently or temporarily, where they are unable to stand up, um, even with help. So the safest way to transfer someone from one surface to another would be to get the surfaces close together and try and get them from point A to point B. Um, something like a slide board is something you would place between two surfaces and the person's bottom would slide across that with your help. There's a few tricks to using a slide board. Um, the key ones are to make sure that the position of the person that's getting assisted is right to begin with. Um, I've seen people use them incorrectly where uh, the person can slide off of the edge of one of these and therefore not much of a transfer except to the floor. So not what we want to see. So the idea would be is to get the person situated back a little bit from the edge of the bed generally say we're bed to a wheelchair and so that when they lean to the opposite direction you can slide the slide board under under them and then they slide back or it's lean back onto the board and then you can help them slide over to the other surface one thing that is often forgotten and i've seen this happen um, with people that aren't aware of it is protecting the skin um, when someone is sliding across one of these, you can get some friction on the bare skin. So there always has to be some protection of the skin. You do not want to do this on bare skin. Bathroom aids will make your job easier and safer. Raised toilet seats reduce the distance the body needs to be lowered. They come with or without armrests. Shower benches are helpful for bathing. Two legs of the shower bench remain outside of the tub. The person is transferred onto the bench and then he or she slides into the tub area. It helps to adjust the outside legs of the bench a little higher so the water runs into the tub instead of onto the floor. Wall-mounted grab bars provide additional support and safety in the bathroom. Before moving someone into the tub, place a rubber mat in front of the bench to provide traction in case the person tries to stand. So I'm going to bring the uh, wheelchair up at about a 45 degree angle to the commode and then set the brakes on the chair. And then um, I've already uh, taken the footrests off so they won't be in the way. Um, so let's go ahead and have you scoot out towards the edge of the seat. Good. And then uh, this is a good time then to go ahead and undo the button and the zipper of your slacks get you ready to go and then uh, let's have you uh, bring your feet apart there you go and slant your knees away from the commode there okay now go ahead Lou and lean forward and I'm going to grab on the side each side of the gate belt and have you stand and turn and just go ahead and back all the way up to the commode till you feel it on the back of your legs okay so now I'm going to hang on to one side here just to help steady a little bit while we get your trousers down. And we can, there you go. Now go ahead and lean forward and reach, but reach back for the chair. Look up. There. Okay, you ready? Okay, so you're going to lean forward and push up from the commode. Good, just mm -hmm. steady yourself there. Mm -hmm. And we'll pull up your trousers. Good. There we go. Hold on to my arm there. Good. All right. Good. Okay, so now we're going to turn and move towards the wheelchair. Good. Until you feel the chair on the back of your legs. And then you're going to reach, bend over and reach back for the chair. And lower yourself down nice and easy. Good. 
so the chair's already at an angle. And then uh, let's go ahead and scoot yourself forward in the chair. Good. And uh, let's get your feet apart a little bit. That's it. Good. So now I'm going to lift up the uh, arm of the chair so you can scoot over there. Good. That's it. And you can push up here and push here. And now let's have you lean forward and come up and turn. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to help you lift your legs into the tub. Good. And the other. And then go ahead and slide on over to the edge there. Before moving her back to the wheelchair, be sure that her skin is completely dry. Wipe up any spills around the bathtub to prevent slipping. Have her slide her hips along the bench toward the edge. Lift her legs from the bathtub onto the floor. Always be on guard for any loss of balance. Have her place her hand on the armrest farthest from her, then using the gate belt, have her pivot into the wheelchair. Soft chairs are a welcome change for anyone who uses a wheelchair. Their deep, soft cushions make them very comfortable, but they also create special problems. The important thing to remember about um, the uh, recliners, uh, lounge chair type of um, um, surfaces is that they are very soft. They allow you to sink into them, which of course is why we all like them so much. The problem um, with someone that might need assistance is getting out of that chair can be difficult. Even the average person, if you're tired and you're in one of those chairs that you sink into, you, you go to get up and it's kind of a little moan and groan as you try and get out of there because, you know, I mean, you're sunk down in it. So uh, the, one of the main things to remember on any of these situations is think a step ahead when you're doing something. If someone really wants to sit in that chair, make sure that you're going to be able to get them out because it's definitely a lot harder to get someone out of a chair or sofa or anything that's soft like that than putting them in there or helping them get in there. So uh, the way to help someone get to the edge of the chair first would be to have her um, try to lean back and scoot her hips forward. Um, and if she's unable to do that, what I can do is come down and help her shift her weight and bring her hips forward and just go a little bit at a time, side to side. That's it. And just come until she reaches the edge of the seat. Um, and then I would come and again, get the feet a little bit apart and have you push up from the chair and lean forward and come up all the way up. Good. And then turn and back up to the chair till you feel it on your legs there. And then reach back for the chair and lower yourself down nice and slow. To transfer someone into a vehicle, bring the wheelchair close to the car and angle it toward the seat. Then set the locks. It helps to move the front car seat as far back as possible. Lift the foot plates out of the way. If needed, you can also remove the entire leg support that is closest to the car in order to move the wheelchair in closer. Have the person move to the edge of the wheelchair. Her first instinct may be to hold on to you. Ask her instead to use her arms to help push off. Support her as she takes small steps toward the car seat. Protect the head as you lower her into the seat. If necessary, help to lift her legs into the car. To transfer her out of the vehicle, be sure the wheels are locked and the foot plates are lifted and out of the way. Help her to bring her legs out of the car. Instruct her to use her hands to help push up into standing. Guide her as she takes small steps and pivots toward the wheelchair. When she feels the back of the chair on her legs, lower her into the chair. When loading the wheelchair, remove the armrests if possible and the leg supports to lighten the load. 
then fold the chair to make it more compact. Keeping the chair close to your body, bend your knees and hips and use your leg muscles to lift the wheelchair into the car. When moving down a ramp or hill, place yourself behind the wheelchair. Keep your legs bent as you maneuver down the ramp. To climb a curb, move as close to the curb as possible. Use the tip bars that are located in the back of the wheelchair to tip the front wheels onto the curb. Then using good body mechanics, lift the back wheels up the curb. To go down a curb, lower the back wheels first. Gently lower the front wheels. If a person in a wheelchair does not move frequently, he or she may develop pressure ulcers. When blood flow is restricted by unrelieved pressure to areas of the body, the skin and tissue begins to break down. If left untreated, pressure ulcers can become a serious medical problem. Pressure points that affect people in wheelchairs include the sitting bones under the buttocks, the place where the spine contacts the back of the wheelchair, the elbows and the heels which rest on the wheelchair's hard surface. Moving and repositioning is the key to preventing pressure ulcers. Have the person shift his or her weight frequently to relieve pressure. Remind him to lift up on the wheelchair if he can. Check all pressure points regularly for redness. Even if redness looks minor, there may already be considerable damage underneath the surface of the skin. Never attempt to treat a pressure ulcer without professional help. Report reddened areas to the nurse or doctor. Walkers provide the most stability of any assistive walking device. Some walkers have wheels and can be pushed along. Others with no wheels are often referred to as pickup walkers. As the person moves forward, he lifts the walker and sets it down. Some walkers come with brakes, storage, and a seat to rest when the person is tired. Walkers are adjusted to the person's height by a physical therapist. What we're looking for is when someone is standing at the walker that the handles are at about the bend in the wrist. Okay, that's something you just to be aware of. Just a couple points to keep in mind. Adjustment height would be number one because it's got to be fit for the person. After that, we need to make sure that we utilize it correctly and when we're walking it's in the correct position for us so that we can actually take steps and not have it too far out in front because you get this which is unsafe and not to be too far up in it because also that is unsafe. So we want to be just about right where our legs line up with the back supports and that's our, our key point and a key place to be. So in utilizing the walker for support is to either step one step at a time and the walker stays with you like this. If the person is comfortable enough to take both steps then they can do it this way. The key thing to remember about utilizing a walker with wheels, whether it's two-wheeled walker like this one or a four-wheeled walker, is that they're meant to roll. That's what the wheels are for. If you stop to pick this walker up, it kind of defeats the purpose of utilizing a walker with wheels. The front-wheeled walker will glide more easily if the back legs have a ski on the bottom. The skied bottom makes it easier to go over rugs and textured surfaces. When walking with someone who uses a walker, stand by the person's weak side and slightly behind. Anyone using a walker should gaze straight ahead rather than looking down at the feet. Crutches are used when a person cannot put full weight on one or both legs. For safety, crutches must be fitted to the person by a physical therapist. So basically we're looking for the space here, about two fingers width in here, and that when the hand is on here, that the elbow has an angle of about 20 degrees here, and then when the crutch is about out here, everything looks, angle's good, space is good. 
When the physical therapist fits the crutches, he or she will also instruct the person which gait to use. Yep, yeah, you're going to have, you can't put any weight through this, okay. and the crutches stay up and out in front of you a little bit and out to the side, and there you go. There you go. A cane is used when a person is able to bear weight on both legs. Regular canes have a handle and provide one point of support. Quad canes have four legs and provide a greater base of support. There are many different styles to choose from. This cane has an ergonomic handle that conforms to the shape of the hand. The canes nowadays pretty much all have these adjustable button in here so you can change the height of them. Very simple. Um, the uh, main thing to remember when you start to use the cane is to get the height correct. The first thing you want to do is with a person standing relaxed is going to be using the cane is to make sure that the handle lines up with the crease in the wrist. If the handle lines up with the crease in the wrist then what it does is it allows an el the elbow to be somewhat bent and have some, some mobility in it when you're using it. And the next thing to remember, that's before you even take a step, is that the cane is used on the opposite side from the injured or weak leg. Uh, what that allows is when your arm swings, it swings with the opposite leg naturally. When we walk, our arms and legs are on the opposite side swinging. So as he takes a step, he'll take a step with the right leg, the cane comes forward, and then he just continues through on the gait cycle, walking normally, bringing the cane. Wheelchairs, walkers, crutches and canes open the door for people to enjoy increased mobility, independence and access to social interaction. This improves the quality of life. As a care provider, you help maintain that sense of well-being as you remain sensitive to your client or family member's needs and provide safe, respectful help and support.